This is your favorite B-Boy show Servus, grüezi und grüezi. Welcome, not the best, no, your favorite podcast with your favorite people. And my guest this time, all the way from beautiful UK, representing MDJ. Make some noise for DJ Kung Fu. What's up, Brandon? <laughs> hey, Matt, how you doing? Thanks, G. All good. Not like the weather in fucking Europe, but uh, yeah. Same in the UK, bro. Uh... But, but you're used to it, no? Yeah, it doesn't mean that we like it. <laughs> nice. So, first and foremost, uh, people only know you as Kung Fu. I know you also as Adil, mm -hmm. the brother. So, how, where, who gave you Kung Fu? How, where, who? Um, I used to break when I was younger as well. That's how I got mm -hmm. into the whole uh, culture. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my breaking name was Kung Fu, short for Kung Fu Shis. Um Because my last name is Khan, and just to play on it, you know. So that's where Khan Fu comes from. Ah, uh -huh. so we solved this mystery now, yeah. yeah the mystery has been solved. Long so you also, so you also before you uh, started playing the, as a DJ, you've been a b-boy too. Yeah. So uh, that was the first thing you got in contact with our culture breaking. Yeah, definitely breaking. I mean, you know. I listen to rap music and, and stuff as well, but uh, breaking remember, was a real entry point. You remember one of the first things you heard or saw that was hip hop uh, re related? Yeah, like my earliest memory is probably that uh, Run DMC Jason Nevins video, you know. Uh, It's like that. that. Yeah, with like Kujo and all of the other guys. I remember watching that when I was a kid on TV. Um, and then the next time I saw breaking was when I went to high school in Birmingham. And I, I think I was 13 at the time mm -hmm. and some kids in my in my class year they were like doing turtles and worms and headstands and and, and what what did uh, what sparked uh, what 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 made you started breaking it was just that I just saw these boys doing like turtles headstands and worms and things mm -hmm. I was like I want to do that but they, <laughs> yeah. you you knew them or they were just some No, I, I was new in the school. I literally just started the school um, when I was 13 because I changed cities. Oh, nice. um, and they happened to be in my year as well, so like same and age. How did you approach it? You just went on to them and told them, hey, teach me? Basically, yeah. It was okay. something like this. Yeah, from what I can barely remember. It was literally like, oh, I'm just going to walk over there. And now, 20 years later, they're still in the scene? Um, Only... At one point, there was about 13 of us, 13 or 14 of us who were oh, like wow. in high school, in the school, you know, we, we ended up getting to that point. Um, and then out of us, like only two, me nice. included. You know? So you, was it a crew? Yeah, it became one eventually. You you also battled? Uh, yeah, this is a, this is like a high school crew. We didn't battle as a high school crew though. We were just oh, doing okay. like, practice and shows um but yeah no battle outside of school and like uh, when i was a bit older i guess we're talking beginning of 2000s right uh how old do you think i am man um <laughs> no it's uh this is probably 2005 but that's beginning of 2000s man come on it's halfway here <laughs> so uh How how did it look? How did your practice look? Who, what what you watched VHSs? You you were you already surfed the internet. Where did you get the inspiration from to practice? This is like the beginnings of YouTube. Actually, ah, okay. like I think YouTube started that same year. So not at the very beginning, um, yeah. but like you know, within like, I think like a year or so, or a year or two, it was like YouTube videos and stuff. Um, like the famous one is probably Junior's video. You know from. DC one, one, yeah, yeah, the very first one I think it was, um, and then later on we found out about some breaking classes happening uh, in the city center. Um, so then that was uh, who were back then yeah. the most watched guys for you or in girls? Most watched? Do you mean like online or in yes, person? Yes. Online, online. Um, again, it was the beginning, so I would say that junior video was the the first viral breaking video that mm. I remember. Um, definitely yeah I think by the time it was like 2000 
let's say 2008 to 10 kind of years, um, YouTube was like pretty full of footage, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And the connection was way faster then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No modem connections. Anymore. People people don't know the struggle. Uh, waiting uh, two minutes to watch a one minute clip, you know? <laughs> I yeah. remember the we always went on Vivo World. Yeah, I remember uh, that as well. New footage section, you know? And then you had to, um, I don't know how to say in English, target safe under? You mean, yeah, I know what you mean. Because we had, yeah. we did Ziel speichern unter. And yeah, just, yeah, yeah, it's right click save us. Like save yes, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, brother, I downloaded a clip from Moy. Mm -hmm. Took me like three minutes. And the clip was five seconds. He did everything. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> and uh, you've been uh, from the crew in your high school you've been one of the better ones uh, no I wouldn't say I was one of the better ones um, I got better okay. because I stuck with it for so long you know but yeah when I started up I, I wasn't one of the better ones I had a little bit of weight on me as well you know so uh, yeah it took me some time what was your approach what did you what did you wanted to learn how was your style was it more power based more style based <laughs> Um, definitely not power based. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, I, I love doing windmills and things like that, for example. Um, yeah. but yeah, I wouldn't say I was power based. Uh, but no, I just I just like intricate footwork patterns and just thinking, mm -hmm. and and just trying to you know make use of space on the floor. So you were more on the original side. I don't know. Um, <laughs> sure. Okay. Enough of the breaking. What <laughs> what made you fall in love with uh, with DJing? With DJ, um, DJing was quite accidental, actually. Um, That's the best stories. Usually, yeah. Uh, but it's it's just so simple. Like when I was eighteen, one of my crewmates was already DJing, and he was just playing on vinyl. And mm -hmm. uh, after one of his bar nights that he did, I asked him if he could play. I think it was Pete Rock and Teal Smooth. Uh, mm -hmm. They were in Minnesota with you. And he said, oh, I don't have the record. So if you buy the record, I'll play it. So then uh, I think maybe the day after, the two days after, like I said, okay, cool. Take me to a record shop. Nice. Didn't find that Didn't find that record. I just bought another random record. But then mm -hmm. yeah, I just kept buying records. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the start. What was that? Was it for you easier to learn how to play tracks than uh, learn moves for breaking? It's two very different skills. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, um, and when I started, I started on vinyl. Um, so like not on CDJs or not on controllers or with laptops at the time. So mm -hmm. the the sort of the learning curve is a lot steeper. Mm -hmm. Um, so it takes you longer to get better. But then, you know, if you can play vinyl, you can play pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. Um, it's my it's my opinion. Mm -hmm. So it took me it took me quite a long time to get comfortable with DJing actually. Mm -hmm. Um. But I was already playing and like we were doing our own nights and I couldn't even mix properly and I was already playing out and organizing all the parties, you know. And ah, nice. So you started with the parties. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, we did one party because um, I joined my friends and their group uh, and they'd already done a, like a couple. So then yeah, when I joined, I remember we did one, one party night and then the next party night we did like an 80s b-boy battle. So you had to like dress up to take part you know it's like fancy costume fancy dress um oh, and nice. that was a party and that was that was hilarious that was fun everyone came like looking the part you know mm -hmm. um and then i think like a year after i started DJing, i organized my first break battle. ah so you began uh, organizing yourself stuff and so you got to play more regularly basically yeah like um for the bar nights we were doing them maybe once a month um, oh, this is perfect yeah and exactly and and to be honest there was five of us you know so mm -hmm. all playing vinyl um for like a six hour night five six hour night so like it was perfect like you know nice. everyone got like a good play time and it was practice as well mm -hmm. you know at the same time if you think about it um and then we also did other parties in like other venues mm -hmm. um so i think the most we might have done is like maybe two or three nights a month at mm -hmm. once you know i think that's probably the most yeah um, and then, like, 
one breaking battle a year. Mm-hmm. And then there were times where, you know, other, say, like centers or uh, art buildings, they had funding and they wanted to do something breaking related. So then I might have helped organize like other random ah, little bits of things, you know. I see. Uh, and this was all taking place in Birmingham at the time. Mm-hmm. before I moved to Manchester. So when you when you started out as a DJ, what was more important for you? To have the good selection or to learn the proper technique? Um, it was hand in hand, like in terms of importance, especially at the very beginning because, you know, you can have selection, but technique is so important when it comes to break DJing and vinyl DJing mm-hmm. in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but then once you get past a certain level of technique, you know, it, you're you can say that you're good enough to be able to play. Yes. Um, so then selections are also important in that regard. And, you know, so mm-hmm. at the time we were just digging, uh, just digging for records as much as I could, uh, we mm-hmm. could. Um, and just trying to find breaks and breaks and breaks, you know. Ah, so, nice, nice, nice. So, yeah, and the stuff I played on vinyl uh, in those days is stuff, you know, probably don't play today at all. You know? Oh, shit. So you you said you played first at parties, but was your goal always to play at at battles? No, nah, man, there was no goals. It, it just was just happened. it just came naturally. It just happened, um, and I had time to focus on DJing and give it like actual attention because I didn't get into university when I was eighteen in my first time round. Mm-hmm. So I decided to take a year off and we do one exam. So I had a whole year where I was just like volunteering, doing random bits and bobs, waiting to go to university. Nice. So then I just, yeah, just DJing just happened, happened, yeah. Yeah. basically. You remember the first organizer who wrote you a message and said, uh, Mr. Kung Fu, we want you for our event? Um, I remember me asking organizers <laughs> um, when I first started. Right. Um, but I think like the first, from what I feel like felt like official was um, I think it was uh, a person called Lucy she did events in the Midlands back in the days okay um, and she held a, like a a crew street dance competition with breaking battles as well so I think there was like yeah was there shows I think it was yeah there was so uh, there were like street dance crew shows uh, cases um, and then there was like one-on-one breaking battles nice and I think there's also like was it popping? I think maybe as well. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But uh, I feel like, yeah, it was one of those events. Or was it purely breaking? I don't remember. It was 2010 or 11. So you've been, 11, you've been playing yeah. a couple of years then? Uh, yes. I, I think I've been playing a, about a year at least. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and I've done some like little events where all cypher time at some events, I think. Okay. Uh, okay. By, by that point, yeah. Uh, the big big events in UK you played then also. In those days, nah, man. Um, I think like my first biggest event in the UK would probably be Just Jam. Just Jam, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, I think Just Jam, and then later on, you know, UK Champs, Break Mission, uh, mm-hmm. whatever else, you know. You don't really hear nowadays, or it's just me, about uh, many UK DJs. Back then you had a lot, or is it now more of them? Or how how how, how was it looking back then? Uh, when I started, it was me and my friend Jam. Like, we were the newcomers. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, I think it would have been people like uh, Timber, Deck One, Credit One. Um, I think... Renegade was still playing in the UK at the time as well. Is is Timber not from Spain? No, Timber's are actually Irish, but he lived in Manchester and I think in the UK in general for so long. Um and then he moved to Spain afterwards. Uh, and then, man, he yeah. did the most gangster thing I ever saw. Oh yeah. I, I think if I say the event, you already know what I'm talking about. It was radical force. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and for the viewers and listeners, nobody entered the battle, right? So this motherfucker put on some salsa, grabbed his girlfriend, and started dancing with her. That sounds like Timber. Yeah. Bra. For me, this is the most legendary move almost. Yeah. Fuck That's everybody. 
that's such a timber move, honestly. Ah, honest. okay, okay, okay. You expect things like this from him. Oh yeah, if you waste his time, you know, he's gonna do something. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um so yeah, so just to answer your question, at the time there was quite a few DJs. Um, ah, okay, okay. Um, but like no one who was young, you know. So like yeah. I mean I was 18 when I started DJing. Um yeah. so yeah, and then now after me, I would say there's maybe one or two oh, potentials, okay. you know, who oh, let's see if give let's give them time. So you nice. play around and take it I mean, of course, of course, Renegade, when I started dancing, he was my favorite DJ. Mm -hmm. The beats he played and everything, you couldn't find them. You can only listen to them when he's playing, you know. So mm -hmm. this, uh, this, the, this was, I think this was the best time because you couldn't find the music. So you needed to go to the jams. You needed to watch the tapes, you know, and... Mm -hmm. If you're cool with the DJ, maybe he told you, but <laughs> try to get cool with the DJ first. You know? Yeah, yeah. And especially in those days, like giving song names is a big no no. Yeah. Uh, even many, today. I had so many stories back in the day with vinyls. They put it in the wrong cases. So when mm -hmm. people looked out and said, ah, this is the song, it was not that song. It was a wrong case, you know, and stuff. Yeah, like that. I've done that as well. Um, Ah, okay. put, we, like you put stickers on your records itself so like you cover the names up so you don't know yeah, yeah, yeah you can't yeah. look on the record when it's playing yeah um, I, I've forgotten so many song names because I've scratched the names out of some oh, table put tape put stickers on it and it's in the wrong cover so I'm like I have no idea what the song is but oh, it's fine fuck, you know? fuck, fuck. so you've been collecting vinyl since then yeah how, how you know pro approximately how many vinyls you have at home uh i don't know i've literally just moved house last week so everything's in boxes still oh congrats um thanks <laughs> a bit annoying you know mm -hmm. um you know packing vinyl and studios and moving in general is annoying mm -hmm. um i don't know i would say i don't think i've reached a thousand oh really yeah no i don't think so maybe close maybe not up, but I don't think so. I don't think I'm near a okay, thousand okay, just okay. yet. Yeah. Um, I'm very selective as well, you know. Mm -hmm. So, nice. um, these these days I'm just buying when I'm abroad a lot, mm -hmm. rather than local. So I enjoy doing that. And uh, when you played the the battles in the UK, did you play it with the vinyl? I guess not, right? Yeah, yeah. You the played first, it with vinyl. Yeah, the first two 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 and a half years. Okay, and why did you? What made you switch to the laptop and mixer, and set up? Because. Uh, because of convenience yeah as simple as that um because yeah. then I, before then this is um all in birmingham so me and my friend we would play everything together and it was easier because we both played on vinyl yes. and you know with vinyl it takes more time to prepare and switch and yeah you know a bunch of other things yeah. so it was easier so then when i moved to manchester for university um and then start getting gigs on my own like i can't take and i didn't drive like i couldn't take enough vinyl Oh for my a full God. day All like these bags top, and it's heavy on public transport or coach or trains or whatever you yeah. know um so yeah so it just made sense to buy yeah. serato at the time yeah if you can choose what you prefer to play i mean like, vinyl or uh, with serato it depends like if i'm playing for breaking battles definitely serato and vinyl yeah, yeah. um if i'm playing parties and clubs and bars yeah. cbjs yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I mean, vinyl, to play vinyl is fun. It has its own sort of allure mm -hmm. as well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, is the quality for... better too? No, no. I mean, this is a debate people still have, but really oh, okay. it just depends on the quality of the record, the speakers, the needle, yes. the digital file. There are many elements to it, huh? Yeah, exactly. It's not like a simple yes or no answer. Ah, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah. You know who's, who was the first DJ in our scene to play with the uh, laptop? DJ Voodoo. Who? Voodoo? Yeah, he told me the story. Yeah. He came, I think it was Battle of the Year, and everybody started hating on him. What yeah. What is this? What is that? He said, guys, this is the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and, it, like, it, it is. Uh, it's the present now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And DJing, like, DJing is technology. Like, 
as technology evolves, you know, so does DJing. And uh, you can choose to play however you want. It really, no one gives a shit about how you play yeah. or what you play on. Like, the dancers don't care. The party people don't care. They just want to have a good time. They just Unfortunately, want to dance. yeah. Yeah, so it's fine. Like, it's nice. Like, mm-hmm. you can have, you have so many options today to mm-hmm. play however you want to, you know. But uh, depending on the kind of DJing you do, there is certain foundations and, okay, you know, uh, traditions, if you will, that also exist. So it's good to be aware of those things. Yes, yes, I see. Uh, when you when you then started playing the first UK battles and got invited, uh, you you had a side job or could you just live off of uh, playing? No, I was I was a student, man. I was studying. Ah, okay. You finished yeah. your your studies? <laughs> yes, many years ago. What uh, what did you uh, accomplish? What what did you graduate? I got a degree in psychology. Um, psychology, G. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, random. Uh, But you never took any job in this, uh, in this, uh, in this world. Let's say like that. No, no. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. So when you, uh, uh, I guess you played a couple of years, just uh, UK wise, and then mm-hmm. the big calls from uh, other countries came. Mm, yeah, I think. Uh, Or you invited yourself again? <laughs> I, I, would, I would be surprised, actually. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think. Um, I'm really trying to remember my first event abroad. Um, I think it would have been the neighboring countries, like I, I think Ireland was probably okay. yeah, Ireland yeah, or yeah. Isle of Man. Yeah, probably Ireland mm-hmm. uh, was probably my first. Like, yeah, I'm getting on a flight to go somewhere, yeah. even though it's a. 20 minute flight you know um oh brother um, you check in that's important you have to check in yeah, yeah, exactly man you know airport that's what counts um, yeah, yeah, yeah. so i think um that would have been around 2014 ah, nice nice was that also yeah. the time uh, around that time when you thought to yourself man i'm good at what i'm doing i can be a full-time dj i can pay my bills with that And in that year, the year like I graduated, I was already DJing every weekend in ah, Bath, nice. okay, in I Manchester, see. and then the occasional events as well, because um, they were every single weekend. Um, um, yeah, so like I never had the thought like oh, I'm gonna be a DJ or like I'm, I can be a DJ. Like it kind of just happened. That's nice. And I just kept going with the flow, you know. At the time, That's nice. I mean, the quality at the end. This is the, everybody wants at the end quality. So if you if you're good in your profession, you will make a make a success out of it, right? And and I think most of all, like I enjoyed it, you know, and I still enjoy it. So yeah. I think that's. What, I also had that sort of b boy breaking hunger at the time, but applied mm. to DJing where I was like, I want to play this event and this event, and how do I get to this event? You know, so that's what kept me going. That that was my motivation at the time. Mm-hmm. And, and you, in those years and you still got non-breaking event uh invitations yeah like i i am um, very slowly like on occasion maybe did like a pop and battle or yeah. like an all-stars battle yeah um and then a hip-hop battle or a house battle here and there so yeah like uh, it's not uncommon if i play all-stars or hip-hop battles now Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, if it comes to like house or crumping or popping, I I say no. Usually. Ah, okay, I see. Yes, I see. Yeah. And any well, in any big hip hop festivals, like when there's only like rap concerts and stuff, you also got invitations for that. Um, I've played like I've supported or like rappers before. Ah, things, okay. Uh, or warmed up as well um, in concerts and things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've done a few of those. Um. And what else? Like, there's been like festivals here and there, randomly, ah, okay. maybe. But not like regularly. No, not regularly. Like regularly, it's more clubs and bars in Manchester City Centre, like yeah, uh, yeah. where I, where I live. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, like the occasional festival, and also like festivals tend to be outdoors, and weather sucks in the UK. Ooh, yeah, yeah. So it's just all. It's always usually in the summer, you know. Um, yes, yes, I see. Like bang, 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 and then mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. big breaks. So yeah. for uh, for all the people who think, hey, I want to be like Kung Fu, I want to be like, <laughs> I want to be like Lean Rock. First of all, would you recommend it? Uh, 
simple answer, no. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, I think like you really have to enjoy this, you yes. know. Yes. Yes. Um, because it's very niche and it's so nuanced. Like, like you, you might have heard of how many dancers who have bought a controller and like learned to DJ or start mixing and stuff, and how common that is to hear, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because that is an accessible way of style of DJing as well. It's just yes. mixing. Yes. And then you look at break DJing, it's just like so different, you know? Mm-hmm. So to get good at it, like you have to be willing to get good at it. Mm-hmm. And also there's a lot of pressure when it comes to break DJing as well. Like, mm-hmm. you know, without music, there's no dancing. So imagine in your middle of a round or a battle and the music just cuts. What what does everyone automatically do? They look at the DJ, you know, like straight away. Like yeah, um yeah. and you know, that can happen for many reasons. Of course. Could it's could be your always, fault, could be yeah, you know. It's not always your fault. Yeah. No, no, exactly. But your first point of contact is always gonna be like the DJ, you know, when yeah. it comes to that. Because it you just distracted and disrupted the whole event. Um nice. but it's all these things that you have to be willing to put up with and then and then I would say yes, if yeah. you're happy to put up with these things. Because <laughs> so, uh, it's a long grind, you know. So can you give us some do's and after that some don'ts as a DJ? Um, you mean DJing in general or break DJing, DJing in general? DJing in general. DJing in general, do's. I mean, definitely do learn your basics. Because uh, it's very easy to take shortcuts with DJing now with technology as well. Just uh, awesome. and. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that all that kind of thing all has its time and place, for sure. Uh, but don't cheat yourself out of the fundamental skills in DJing by letting technology help you, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the main thing I would say is, uh, yeah, don't cheat yourself out of the fundamental yeah. skills, you know. Because mm-hmm. even if you think about, say, you're playing vinyl, there's no information there. doesn't tell you what BPM it is. doesn't no, tell you. No, it's nothing, yeah. No, like, no, exactly. No, you just have your ears, you know? So you have to learn to mix two records by ear, mm-hmm. not by eyes, basically. Um, so definitely learn and do that. What about a don't? Uh, I'll try to do, like, one of each, you know? Ah, nice. Um, a don't of DJing. Um, mm, don't try to play just for yourself, I would say is a big one. Um, your job is to play for people. Yes, whether that's in a party or in a lounge, or in a restaurant, or in a battle of all random places, you know. So don't try to just always play for yourself. Trust yourself, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, your job is to bring the best out of other people. Mm-hmm. So it's not to say that you try to play for them or only for them. There's a balance, you know, but uh, it can't just always be. I'm gonna play this song because I like this song. I yeah. don't care if you like this song. Yeah, if you don't I think know this it, song is you have no yeah. idea what music it is. Yeah, exactly. So don't don't be that guy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Never be that guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, um yeah. You have some more uh, for us? I I definitely do. Um <laughs> like there's always things, you know. Uh here's a big do mm-hmm. and a don't at the same time, I guess, is um don't ever let the room go silent as oh. best as you can you know always have some music playing in the background uh, oh yeah yeah events. yeah oh my god i hate this i hate it you know like there are times where it's appropriate to ask the dj to turn it up completely yes maybe before the final you're trying to build suspense and i also do that i also do you that know? and that's fine you know um but not all day long, constantly, yeah. you know, like it has its time and place. Maybe it's an emergency. Hey, we found a phone. Like, oh, yes. whose car is that? Uh, so and so is in the hospital. Like, someone go with them. You know, like, yeah. it's okay to cut the music off in those yeah. circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Um. So then, do try to play music at all times, even mm-hmm. if it's in the background. Um. Yeah, that's what comes to mind. I'm sure. Like, if you ask me a question, I'll be answer like we'll, we'll get straight to it. You know, we we get to that too. We get to that too. Uh, now I need to tell you a story. You will be so proud of me, brother. We'll Go on, man. The story now. So I was in this battle, right? In uh, Find Your Flow. It was last weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, Saturday, Sunday, right? 
And Saturday, the Beat Nuts was performing. Nice. So, first of all, I got to introduce them. So I was already hyped. You know, oh, I introduced Beat Nuts, okay? <laughs> then they start the concert and uh, they played the No One's Ready to Deal With Us, you know, the song. Mm -hmm. And there is this part where they go like, oh, oh, turn it up. Oh, oh my God. Oh. And I'm at one side of the stage and I'm rapping to it. And on the other side is a is an MC from the Beat Nuts. And he saw me, brother, from back there, put his hand up like, yeah, you're the man. He came up to me, gave me hand, you know, like that. <laughs> so I already was like hype, you know. And then it was like maybe 30 minutes past midnight. And you know how it is. Everybody's a little drunk. Nobody wants to leave when it's the highest moment, you know. So I go there was an after party scheduled, right? So I see the two DJs that are being booked, but they are two beginners, you know? It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, a brother and sister. And I see them, I go up to them. And I was like really drunk. I go to them like, hey, you're the DJ, right? Yes. You're scheduled to play. Yes. Why don't you play? Ah, we can play. I said, what you can play? You're, you're scheduled as DJ, right? Nah, we don't play. You know DJ Catch, right? Catch, yeah, yeah. Yes. And his real name is Rico. Mm -hmm. So they say, Rico said we can't play. I say, what? Rico said you can't play? Let me call him. I call him, brother. I say, where are you? I'm on my way home. I say, bro, we still want to make party. The DJs are here. Can we make some more party? Like one hour, 90 minutes at least. He says, oh, when, if the DJs are there, you can play. I say, you're sure we can play? Yeah, yeah. When the DJs are there, you can play. Have fun. He said, okay, I will do it. I say to them, yeah, he said we can play. The girl is like really unmotivated like this. <laughs> she was ready to go home. <laughs> I don't know what happened. And the guy was also really demotivated. I told him, bro, come on, this is your chance. You know, people are here. They want to the, they have a party, you know. No, no, no. I say, you know, I don't, no pressure. If you don't want to play, don't play, you know. All of a sudden, he's motivated. Bro, he goes. I go to the DJ of Beat Nuts. I go to him, bro, how, how long time, how long you play? I just one or two more songs. I say, perfect, because we're going to play the after party. He say, okay. I go back to this guy. I say, so what's up? Can we play? Bro. No. I say, what, well, man? What happened? I'm so unmotivated now. I can't do this. I say, come on, man. He said, no, I don't want. He say, I say, you know what? Fuck it. I got my laptop here. I'm going to play. Nice. <laughs> Bro, I went up there. I talked to the other friend he was playing before. I said, bro, please help me up. Uh, please help me put it all together. I had no headphones. <laughs> I had no uh, plates, you know, to mix it. I only had the mixer. Okay. <clears throat> so I tell him like, aha, uh -huh, I can do here. And I say, no, no, bro, you do have nothing. You only have the cue points. You have nothing. <laughs> I said, you know what? Fuck it. Bro, I played one hour after party. Was it good, yeah? Bro, I just played my shit. You just played for yourself, yeah? Yeah, but the people liked it. I only play R&B and uh, one of the beat nuts came up to me. He was dancing with a girl. He said like, hey, can you play some disco, please? Bro, I put some disco for him. At the end, <laughs> I finished with Sade and Killing Me Softly. Bro, oh, nice. and then beat nuts came to me. And said, man, you're such a cool guy. You're such a dope DJ. You killed it. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I'm not a DJ. <laughs> no you are now. DJ. <laughs> bro, this DJ was, now, bro. Accept bro, it. This was one of the best hip hop moments of my life, I'm telling you. Yeah, bro, sounds like it. And I not didn't even plan it, bro. The best ones are always unplanned, you know. It was amazing. It was amazing. And I'm so hyped to play now again. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And this was last week, you said? Yeah, this weekend. Okay, fair enough. This week, I already told him, man, next year when you do the event and you plan an after party and you don't book me, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a problem. With some proper equipment this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Yeah, please. Please. Proper. <laughs> So, my brother, we're coming to the phase five section, yeah, where we talk about your okay. favorite five things. It can be more, it can be less. It's yeah. your... So, we always start classic, 
your favorite five B boys all time. Oh, fucking hell, wasn't ready for that one. Um, all time favorite five breakers. Okay, uh, I would say Cujo. Oh, uh, and Junior because they were like the first that yes. I saw. You know what I mean? Um, and then uh, there's too many to pick from, man. Casper. Ooh, that's a nice one. Yeah, like I'm just trying to remember like who I used to enjoy watching uh, mm -hmm. when I started breaking. You know, um, uh, nasty Ray as well. Ooh, yeah. Oh, he was so nasty. He was so yeah. nasty. Um, yeah, in those days it was like nasty Ray, Cloud, uh, Casper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then, ooh. Uh, yeah, go on. I'll put Cloud in there as well. Again, nice. just these guys. I was watching a lot. I mean, them. it's a great list, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a great list. Uh, <laughs> favorite five B girls. Eagles, I think for me, Ayumi mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. is number one. Um, Rogina from the UK. Yeah, it's a it's a fresh name too. Definitely. Um, she kicks ass. You know, like. For years consistently mm -hmm. so yeah uh, um ayumi or gina uh who else uh let's see my crewmate becky nice. back in the day used to blow me uh like blow my mind as well um uh, how many have I got three done two three. left okay do i pick someone like that i used to watch someone new be one of each all time be all time you know all time it's hard man um uh let's see oh i think mika right now for me as well i think she's gonna take the olympics she's a strong contender for sure yeah definitely um and like she just like she just breaks you know what i mean like just and it's most pure as four class class uh, exactly um and then hmm. uh, it's just so many to pick from, man. Like, and I'm thinking right now, which continent do I go to? And then pick one from the <laughs> continent, you know, like a random one. Um, I don't know, let's leave it at that one. Okay, okay, we leave it at that one. Uh, yeah. Of course, your DJ, your favorite five DJs. Um, I think for me, like, I'll put a couple of breaking ones in there, yes. and, like, not breaking ones. Uh, it's going to be a random list as well. I think for me, favorite break in DJs would have been like Timber and Scamera for me. Mm -hmm. uh, like hip hop DJs, I think Jazzy Jeff is in that list for me for sure. So is Craze. And then I've got one more left, and I'll pick uh, my favorite DJ from last year was Skrillex. Skrillex? Yeah. Nice. Nice. You, did you ever have like a role model DJ you wanted to be like? Um, not one particular. I like mm -hmm. I liked different yeah. things about other people, you know. Um, but I just wanted to play. That's what I wanted to do. Yes, 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 yes. So yeah. five of your favorite events that you played. I mean, there is so many. I know it's really hard, but uh, we just want to hear a, a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, Who Got the Flower has to be one of them, yeah. for sure. And while I'm in France, Vortex Jam as well in the last sort of couple of years mm -hmm, has mm -hmm. been one of my favorites to play for. Um, in the UK, I really enjoy like, uh, you know, Just Jam when it happens. Um and I enjoy Chaps and Break Mission as well. You know, they all have like different feels to them. Um, what else? Um, I think that time I played the Red Bull Cypher in Pakistan was amazing. Ooh, well. nice. Because um, that was in my hometown mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in Karachi. So that was a whole great like experience attached to just playing an event, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Let's see. I mean, I enjoyed classics last weekend. Just gone now, you know, while ah, breaking classic. I, I heard a little bit. You killed it, brother. Definitely. Oh, yeah. The, who yeah. told you? Huh? Who told you? I heard it on the YouTube. But, <laughs> on the YouTube. Okay, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and then, I don't know, man. Like, uh, if you'd asked me, like, you know, I don't know, what, 10 years ago, I would have had, like... It would be different, yes. Different answers, because in those years, I was, like, chasing events to, to a point, you know? I was like, I want to play this, this, and this. And now they, they chase you. It's not even that. Like, I've played a lot of the events I wanted to play. I think there's... I don't think there's an event now that, like, I'm hungry to play for. Yeah. I just appreciate, you know, the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you got one drawer and everything, you know. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying different things about it now, mm-hmm. you know, compared to then just wanting to play. Now I'm like, okay, what can I play? How can I play different? What's the vibe like? How can I create an atmosphere? And just focusing more on these things, even though these things I was doing and focusing on in those years as well but yeah i'm trying to look for different things now yeah. yes 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 um five of your favorite countries you visited uh let's see uh i'll put pakistan in that list i'll put south korea hong mm-hmm. kong um turkey usa um we've always had a great time in poland oh, we've had a great okay. time in france as well um in germany and switzerland the t- the two times i've been or three times i've had a great time there um denmark mm-hmm. uh, i don't know mm-hmm. ireland always go- great you know mm-hmm. um uk so uh the next phase five you already a little disqualified that because you said you're not really chasing any more events right because mm-hmm. i wanted to ask phase five events you didn't play but you want to play is there still events you didn't play it yet and you wanted to play it mm. um i'm trying to think of the events from like those years that were popping, ah, okay. you know i think the only one probably i haven't played is like freestyle session finals yeah. i played like qualifiers for like ah, different okay. countries here and there but uh, i haven't played the finals that's probably the only event i could think of but uh No, not really. Okay. Yeah. And last but not least, uh, it doesn't have to be five, but some favorite moments. I mean, I know you have so much good stories, brother. So tell us <laughs> some favorite moments of your <laughs> of your experience as a DJ at a battle, especially at a battle. At the battle. Um... Because uh, it's, a, it's a breaking podcast at the end. Of it, right? Of course. I mean, there's so many like fuck-ups. I could tell you about, you know, they're always hilarious. Um, or like, just, yeah, random things. Like last year during the break mission finals, this is all on live stream as well. Like it's the last battle of the whole weekend. And then some idiot decides to pour Fanta from the top because it's in a shopping center. So people are above and it's right on top of the decks and the mixer and the laptops of mine in Okanaga, you know, uh, so like this happened um one time i was djing on a table that was swinging from the ceiling um what you know what i mean like random things like this one time i showed up to an event and the mixer was missing um so okay. for an hour and a half it was just my laptop playing windows media player mixtapes you know on the oh, nice nice and until the mixer came then i could dj <laughs> um Like, these are sort of random fuck-ups, you know. And then there's always the, uh, the nice things, which is, like, when there's a, a connection between you and the dancer. You know, when you play a good song or the right song at the right time, it's, like, everyone just feels it. Um, and you can just feel the energy just lift up as well. Like, this is this is usually what I'm chasing now, you know. Ah, I see, yes. Um, and, yeah, like, as long as I get that at least once or twice at, a, mm-hmm. uh, at an event, I'm happy. Okay. And I, I, I want to have some negativity too because we're always positive you don't have to say the name of course of the event but which event would you never also ah, you can't say the name but why <laughs> would you never play this event oh um <laughs> i don't I know mean, actually i will ask you after we record what the name of the event yeah. we won't say it now publicly um I haven't had any experiences where like ah okay that's nice then. yeah you know DJ experience is always different like mm-hmm. 
I tell you what, like it was it was a struggle in the in the younger years to play places like France or Italy where they have a different taste, you know, for breaking music uh, as well. Um, so like, yeah, so learning to adapt. So that was a struggle as well. You know, when, like when you start playing different countries and different teams, it's like, you know, not all of your songs work everywhere all the time, you know. So it's ah, just, was there a moment you like know? you played the hit from you or like, you know, this song is going to kill and people were like, hmm, what's this? Yeah, plenty of times. Happens all the time. Still happens yeah. now, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how else are you going to test the waters with new songs? Of course. You know? Of course, yeah. You know, uh, a song might give you, good, good, uh, give you a great feeling and then when you play, it's like, oh, damn, no one, no one liked it. Yeah. Uh, at least at least you try it. but you try it in the right moments you know mm -hmm. you don't just try in like mm -hmm. crucial moments like the final you don't experiment in the final yeah you, you don't know? experiment in the final definitely i don't i don't experiment in the final let's just put it that I way i mean you know? nobody should experiment i mean if it's a banger you know it's a banger it's a remix of a banger a banging remix banging banger you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah Something you know, but like you know, nothing like you think. Oh, this is gonna challenge the dance. We were the... Chal challenge them before the final. You know, now, in the last final. weekend, last weekend uh, was the final for the crew battle, and I always do it with my hand up, and then I put the hand down. Everybody screams, right? And I talked to Flag about what I want to do, and he said, hey, you know, I want to play a, a remix from they they not like us, you know." <laughs> and then the people will get hype, you know, and then. We cut the music and you can do it again. And when we did it, people weren't hyped, you know, because <laughs> in in, uh, in Switzerland they are not like this. Like when you played in the states, you know what I mean. Okay. I yeah. think the states, like you said, different countries, different tastes. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. always uh, want to be like other countries, and they don't have their own trends really, you know. But uh, in this moment, like there was like just a handful of people going like, wow, 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 you know? That's, and it was probably the dancers as well, you know, like, if the I room guess was filled probably with more younger, dancers, maybe. Younger people, you know, who uh, follow all the, the social media beef and everything and stuff, because my generation don't follow this anymore, you know? No, no, but you can't escape it. Like, you're aware of something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Man, I mean, I, have you seen, out. have you seen Drake playing They Not Like Us at his concert? Uh, someone told me about this clip. I had no, I saw myself. the clip, yeah. And he's and... rapping certified lover boy, certified pedophile. He's rapping that. I don't know what, what his uh, approach is to try to for me this navigate sign... this beef, you know what for I mean? Like, weakness. now for me, this is a sign of weakness, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, but maybe, yeah. but yeah, what do I know? Drake has so much money. He can uh, wipe up his tears with all this cash, you know. So, so I was about to say, you know, like, <laughs> what? I'm not, I don't, care. I don't follow it to that degree either. Yeah. I like some of the music though. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, the, the songs are good. The songs are good. Mm -hmm. the songs are really nice. So, my brother, thank you so much for taking your time. I really okay. appreciate it having this conversation with you, and of course for our viewers and listeners to get a little bit more to know about you i recommend everybody to follow this guy on his journey on the socials because he's also a really funny motherfucker we had so much good times i left so much with you and i can't wait to work with you again brother um I'm sure so, it'll happen uh so you have any last words and shout outs uh big <laughs> shout out to you my guy and um yeah that is all i gotta go do stuff <laughs> for me of course also again thank you for taking your time brother for all the viewers and listeners don't forget to subscribe we're on the road to 1000 subscribers uh, post notification on you never miss a video comment who you want to see next give us a thumbs up it goes a long way for the algorithm and if you want to show full support you go out to Patreon yeah 5 euro in a month you you pay 5 euro for bullshit every month you can pay for the Godfather channel and you also get something back for it. Yes. At the beginning hey. of the month, you get all content of the whole month already. You don't have to wait like everybody else. And we every month we do a giveaway. Last week, uh, last month, we had the Kangol giveaway. Milos was the winner. And this month, we have the giveaway for the Nike Jam Breakdance Show. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can become a patron and you will be in the pool. And if I pull your name, 
you will get the Nike break ten shoe. Not the not the whole shoe. I give you hundred euro and you have to pay the rest. <laughs> so yeah, thank you again, my brother. See you soon, hopefully. And yeah, that was your favorite people host with your favorite people show. Peace.